Hello. Today we're going to read with my friend Dragon. Hi, Dragon. The book we're going to read is called Snowbound Secrets, and it's written by Virginia Kroll and Nivola Uya. Please, Papa, let me go too, begged Pim. I'm a good yak herder. Yes, Papa agreed, but now the snow is deep in places. Go to sleep and dream of summer. Papa, please, Pim tried again. If you keep whining, Yeti will get you, warmed Pim's big brother, Bim, grabbing her and growling. Oh, Bim, squeal, squealed Pim, squirming away. You're just trying to scare me. Still, she wondered, did hairy mountain monsters really capture troublesome children? At dawn, Pim was wide awake and winter dressed as Bim and Papa piled packs on the herd. Please, Pim asked once more. Mama wrapped Pim's warmest woolen shawl around her small, sturdy shoulders. You may go, daughter, she said. When it came to decisions involving the children, a mother's word was law. Pim hugged Mama tightly and then hurried to join Papa and Bim for her first ever mountain journey. Pim liked how the crispness of new air filled her lungs and made her feel clean from the inside out. She imitated squeaks of tiny, teeny pikas skittering to their hide-and-seek spots. She liked the clap of the yak's hooves as they hopped on rocks and clomped up hills. She watched the swishing of their shaggy flank fringe. Their soft snorts and grunts comforted her, and when she heard the cry of the sacred black-necked crane, she knew that all would be well along their trail. Of all the yaks, Pim's favorite was cream-colored Carpo, whose name meant fair one. She had been born last year to Nado, the big, the dark one. Now she and Pim would learn the secrets of trail trekking together. Two windless days passed. The yaks plodded single file on along pebbled paths, each stepping in the footprints of the hooves ahead, stopping to nibble moss and grasses, herbs and lichens wherever they grew. When Pam's legs tired, Papa hoisted her atop Nado's strong back. I love this whole wide world, she shouted, gasping in awe at the scenery around her. On the third day, right before nightfall, a blizzard blew in. Icy sleet, like freezing needles, pierced the skin on Pim's wind-burned face. The thick-coated yaks turned away from the wind and stood still, but young Carpo was confused and afraid. She skittered and jerked when Pim snatched her lead rope. Pim spoke soothingly, easy, Carpo, Turn. Carpo slipped. Pam grabbed her tufted tail to steady her. Too late. Down the rocks they skidded, then slid. Pam! Papa's panicked voice wailed, but it and Pam's screams were gobbled by blowing snow. Down Pam and Carpo spiraled into a sea of swirling white. Pim's breath was whooshed away. She closed her eyes tightly, then bump into a bank of fluff she landed. Dragon. Carpo, where are you? She sobbed and tears froze on her face. In the pitch black night, only the snow shed a pale glow around her. Pim knew that Papa and Bim couldn't reach her in the storm. 
She knew that she'd be alone till morning, and she had to find Carpo so that they could be alone together. Pim heard a grunt. On her belly, she inched blindly toward the sounds, slowly, to keep from tumbling off another rocky ledge. Carpo, she called, trying to sound brave. Pim's whole body ached. Suddenly, she felt a flurry, I mean, a, a furry foot. Carpo, she yelped, gripping the hairy coat and pulling herself up by its thickness. But this was not the feel of Carpo's fur. Pim looked up. Eyes glimmered, peering into hers. Not Carpo's round, brown, long-lashed eyes, but the squinty eyes of something, someone, Yeti! Pim fainted in terror. Pim awoke in a cozy cave with a crackling fire. Carpo snorted beside her. Suddenly she, re I'm sorry, slowly she remembered the slipping, the sliding, the landing, the Yeti. Bim was right after all. Pim trembled, wondering why Carpo was so calm. Didn't animals have a sense for danger? She hugged her knees, hoping to become an invisible ball, when two furry legs appeared before her. Pim gazed upward and met the creature's face. She knew he was telling her, don't be afraid, though no words actually came from his mouth. He explained that she and Carpo were bruised, but otherwise fine. Somehow, he knew she felt hungry and held out a handful of nuts and grains. His thoughts came from his brain, through his eyes, and right into Pim's. Back and forth, they transferred questions, answers, and feelings while Carpo chewed the mound of hay that Yeti had provided. Pim told Yeti about how grown up how grown ups frightened children with tales about his kind. Yeti told Pim about hunters and why he must stay hidden. Pim told Yeti about home. Yeti understood all about family and asked if he could trust her. Pim prom promised him that he could. Yeti made sounds like words that Pim couldn't understand. From the shadows, a female yeti appeared with twins about Pim's size. They all stared, one as curious as the next. The twins pulled Pim to a wall deep within the cave. In the firelight, she saw drawings of familiar animals with black-necked black cranes flying above them. There were drawings of the twins and their parents and one of a human with a gun. This cave wall, Pim realized, told the story of this family's life. One of the twins handed Pim a pointed stone and the others patted the wall. Pim understood. She added a sketch of herself and Carpo and they thanked her with smiles. Now Pim was part of their story too. When tiredness overtook her, she lay down between the twins. Just before she fell asleep, Yeti, I promised Pim that he would lead her and Carpo back to Papa and Bim tomorrow. Pim blessed Yeti with a promise of her own. As dawn greeted a calm new day and the sun's rays dappled the entrance to the cave, Yeti told Pim that it was time to go. Pam, the twins, and their mother st stared goodbyes into each other's eyes. Then Yeti led Carpo out and hefted Pam onto her back. They traveled the trail in silence until a black-necked crane cried, and Pam heard Bim and Papa calling her name. Pam and Yeti exchanged one last look, then he vanished. I'm here, Papa, 
Pam yelled over and over. When Papa came into view, Carpo's footsteps quickened. Pam leaped from her back into Papa's arms, and they tumbled to the ground in a tangle of joyful hugs. At breakfast, Pam stroked Carpo's leg and talked about how scared she'd been. About Bim said, good thing Yeti didn't get you. Pam smiled. It was a good thing, she said, keeping her promise to Yeti and hugging the secrets with all her heart. The end. Bye, dragon. Good night, night. Good night. Mwah.